know snakes smell with their tongues, hear with their jaw, and see heat, their venom can kill but also cure. Our story today includes snakes. Watch out! Good day! I am so glad you've joined us today. Let us begin by getting ourselves ready with a prayer. The Lord be with you. And you can say, and also with you. Gracious Father, whose blessed Son, Jesus Christ, came down from heaven to be the true bread which gives life to the world, evermore give us this bread that he may live in us and we in him, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's story is actually two separate stories that tell us the same thing, but two different ways. Sometimes it helps to hear something one way and then to turn and look at it another way. To be able to see it from different perspectives. Very few things in life are flat. And so it helps to walk around, to see all the sides of any given thing, to look up, look down, listen, ask questions, and come to a fuller understanding of the thing. And that's what we're going to do today. Our first story starts with the Israelites and Moses. Now the Israelites have been gone from Egypt for a pretty long time. And they've been walking around and around and around in the desert. And things have not been very easy. They have encountered all sorts of hardships. It wasn't quite how they had pictured freedom. They start to complain. They complain about the walking. They say that there is no food and the food they have is terrible. They complain about having no water. Now, there are a lot of people here, thousands. And the grumbling and the complaining, it starts with just a few at first. And then there's a few more unhappy people and then a few more. And before they knew it, everyone was complaining. Everyone was thinking back to the time when they were in Egypt and their memories seemed a lot better than what they had now. They started to wish that they had never left at all. And the morale of the people was tanking fast. So God sent fiery or poisonous snakes and the snakes began to bite the people and the people began to die. Lots of people began to die. Snakes were everywhere. Can you imagine stepping outside your house and seeing snakes or going to the bathroom? Snakes or grabbing a snack in the snack basket? Snakes. There was no escaping the snakes. So the people went to Moses and they said, we realize that we have been complaining and we were wrong. Our complaining and our grumbling, wishing we were back in Egypt, has caused God to send these snakes. Please, please pray to God and have him take these snakes away from us. So Moses went and he did pray to God. And God told Moses to make a sculpture of a snake and to put it on a pole and to lift it up. And every time that someone would get bitten by a snake, they were to look up at the snake on the pole. So that's what Moses did. Moses made a snake out of bronze and he put it on a pole and he lifted it up. And everyone that would get bit and then look at it would be saved. Now, I wonder how this story makes you feel. What does it make you think about complaining or snakes? Hmm. What does it make you think about God? 
This story alone can really make us have a lot of questions. And we need our second story, our gospel story today, to help us answer some of these questions that start to bubble up on this story alone. In today's gospel story, which is found in the gospel of John, Jesus starts out referencing this very story of Moses and the Israelites and the snakes. He says, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. When Jesus says the Son of Man, he is talking about himself. The people he is talking to, they know the story of Moses and the Israelites and the snakes in the desert. It would be like if I told you that I was going to get some breakfast and I was going to order oatmeal. And I said, I sure do hope that my oatmeal is not too cold and not too hot. I sure hope that my oatmeal is just right. You would know that I was referencing the story of Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Jesus is prophesying about his death on the cross and using the story of Moses and the snakes to tell people that his dying on the cross has to happen so people will have eternal life. The eternal life that Jesus is talking about doesn't mean that people will never die, but that their spirit, their essence will continue to live even after the physical body dies. Jesus says that our part is to believe in him. Then Jesus says something you might have heard before. He says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only son so everyone who believes in him may not perish. That means die. But may have eternal life. God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. We need to do some unpacking on that statement. Jesus is telling the people that he is here because God loves us all so much that he sent Jesus, God with flesh, for the, all the people who believe in him to be set free from death, for people to have eternal life. That's life right now, and life in eternity. This is where I find it helpful for the two stories to work together for us to be able to have a better, fuller understanding. Before Jesus came, in fact, just shortly after the creation of people, people have been separated from God, separated by knowing evil and death the negative things that eat at our heart and our soul and our mind. One of those things can be complaining and grumbling, being ungrateful for the things that we have. Like we saw in our story with the Israelites as they traveled through the desert, the negative things that eat at our mind and our heart and our soul, they can be tricky because you can't always see them. The beginning of negative things usually start with thoughts that happen inside us. They sit and they eat. And then we spread them when we grumble at another person or we get snappy. We might even say a mean thing and make another person have to experience our negative junk. And sometimes that negative junk multiplies and sticks around with our other person and it starts to eat at them. I bet you've experienced this before. The growing ick of negativity. You can't see it, but 
you can see the damage it's doing. That is what was happening to the Israelites. And the negative it had started to whisper that this was all God's and Moses' fault. They had brought them here to die. The Israelites were seeing their difficulties from only one point of view. The negative ick made them believe this was the only explanation. So God sent snakes. Snakes can be seen. The unseen ick was already slowly killing them from the inside out, and they didn't even know it. The snakes and the bites just made the negative ick visible. And it's a lot easier to fight things that we can see and name. It really helps to see things if you're going to fight them. Before the snakes came, the Israelites needed God. They needed God to help them see all the sides of their hard times. They needed to remember that God loved them and that he had set them free from a truly bad situation. The Israelites needed to be with God. They needed to include God in their conversations and their feelings. The snakes coming helped the Israelites to do that. It helped them to see things differently. They were able to go to God and be saved, not just from the snakes, but from themselves and the negative ick that had spread throughout the camp. Just like the snakes helped the people to see where the negative ick was in their lives, Jesus helps us to see where the negative ick grows in our lives too. He models for us what goodness is. Jesus shows us what real love really looks like. Jesus tells us about the character of God and what a good neighbor looks like. So we can look at our lives and see what doesn't belong. And what doesn't belong is the negative ick that's been around since the beginning, since creation. It's kind of like those puzzles or those pictures where you have two of them side by side and one of them has things that are different and you have to find them and circle all the places that are different in the two pictures. That's one of the things that Jesus does for us is he is the first picture that we compare our lives to so we can find the differences. But we aren't alone to fix them. God is right there with us to help. This requires us to look at Jesus. It requires us to bring our life into the light so we can take a look at it with Jesus. It is really hard to see differences in the dark. It requires us to believe Jesus is who he says he is. Perfect goodness, love, and the Son of God. This isn't always easy to do. It can make us feel exposed and vulnerable and really uncomfortable. It could make us feel sad that we aren't perfect, but nobody, nobody is perfect. The most important thing to remember is that Jesus came here because he loves you. He did not come to make you feel bad about the negative ick that grows inside, but to lovingly remove it. He came to heal you. Jesus came to make you and all things new with his love. Let us pray. The Lord be with you, and you can say, and also with you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I hope you guys have a fantastic week. What do you call a snake that bakes? A python. <laughs> <laughs>